Magic 102.1, the all new Manhattan show. And it is an absolute pleasure for me to talk to this young man. Again, it's another one of those weird things you say to yourself, man, if I ever got back on radio, I would like to speak to Chris Walker. <laughs> Bing! Radio happens again. So I said, first person I want to talk to is Chris Walker. Bam! <laughs> and I know his brother now because I used to work for him. So I like, so he's nice enough to be here. Thank you so much, Mr. Walker. Here's the biggest reason why I want to speak to you. I feel, my personal opinion, right. that Chris Walker gets left out of the conversation of Houston R&B. And I don't know why it irritates me. And there's probably a lot of people that get left out because there's such a heritage of music in this city. Right. So, But there's only certain names that I hear resonated. But hey, one of the first solo artists, R&B, to go gold platinum is Chris Walker, to my knowledge. Now, there probably was some other groups, maybe 60s, 70s, I'm not aware of. Like I said, there's an extensive history here. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard somebody mention your name. I don't know why it irritates me. Because I would always say, hey, man, do you... I used to talk about you all the time. Do you know Chris <laughs> Walker? Da, 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 da. And then when I met your brother, right? and he just, hey, I, my brother's name is Chris. That's funny, man. He used to be a singer by the name of Chris Walker from Houston. <laughs> yeah, that's my brother. What? <laughs> right. I was so excited. I know, I know y'all, but I was in college. I had the CD and Chris Walker. I, I just love the song Take Time. And uh, he knows that. But, man, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. I my need brother. you to spit some of the facts of Chris Walker so the city can know and, and, and make sure that you are not erased from the history of this incredible, iconic city of music and musicians. So let's go back. You've always played music, and your brothers had a group called the Walker Brothers. Let's start there and what that was like. All right. Um, my, my father had a love for quartet music, and he wanted a, a gospel group. So my brother Ernest was playing drums. I was on bass, singing background and lead. And my oldest brother Charles was playing guitar. Wow. So that, that started, you know, our love for music. My father put the bass guitar in my hand upside down because I'm left-handed. And, um, and that's... I never realized that till today that you played upside down like Jimi Hendrix. Yep. I never realized yep. that. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm lefty. I'll never be right. <laughs> <laughs> Although you live right every day. Hello. Yes, sir. So uh, that started, you know, our love for music. Mm -hmm. And I used to practice, man. I mean, I would practice all day long. When I got home from school, I would fall asleep with the bass guitar on my chest because I had a dream mm. that one day I want to move to New York City. Okay. You see. So I, I uh, went to Hartsfield Elementary School. From there, Cullen Middle School. And then I went to Jack Yakes High School for one year. Third Ward. Third Ward. <laughs> and then I transferred to high school for the performing and visual arts because mm. my older brother Charles had gone there so I said and I saw his musicianship just blossom so mm. I said I want to do that so I auditioned and by the grace of God they, they allowed me uh, to, to, to enter the school mm. Dr. Robert Morgan um, so from there when I first started attending the school man I, I, I did not understand jazz and I was like making straight F's in theory I, it just didn't click mm -hmm. one day out of the blue man it just all made sense like somebody switched on a light straight A's from that point on mm. so from there I I um, wanted to attend the new school for jazz contemporary music in New York City didn't have the money my parents couldn't afford it so I filled out an application they denied it they said you can't afford the tuition you can't attend mm. well you know um, I believe in God and I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit told me to go to New York City anyway when I graduated from high school, I was 18. School was already a month in progress. I literally walked into my parents' kitchen with my bags packed and said, I moved to New York City. They were like, what? You going where? With, you know, I had a base amp. I sold the base amp for $240, bought a one-way ticket for $200, and landed in New York City with $40. And wow. a dream. So, man, and I knew one guy by the name of Justin Page who I kept in touch with. I won a competition called um, Arts, and he happened to be one of the chap arts competition. And he happened to be one of the chaperones. Yes, sir. And he lived in New York. So we exchanged numbers. I called him up and I said, hey, man, I'm, you know, can I come and stay with you until I find a place to live? And he said, sure. So I arrive in New York, school already a month in progress. I go down to the school the next day. I took my bass guitar. As soon as I walked into the building, I heard music coming out of the auditorium. So I poked my head in just to check it out. So I walked in, noticed some guys were playing and just so happened they didn't have a bass player. 
<laughs> so they motioned and, and, and pointed, you want to play? I said, sure. So I get on the stage, man, I'm playing along with them. The dean of the school walked in and the instructor over the program and gave me a full scholarship to go to school. What? So, <laughs> look, Matt, Matt, I'm telling you. It was, it was, and that was confirmation that the Holy Spirit told me to go. God mm. already made provisions for me to be there. Yes, sir. So, man, and, and you know, I could keep going on, man. I might have so many stories like that to just blow your mind, but I'll no, let you ask I the mean, next question. I mean, because here's the thing, though. People don't understand how extensive, if you don't know, okay, let me go back just a little bit. Uh, Chris Walker, I, I know I always like to start with my favorite song. Take time. But <laughs> he's had several, several incredible albums. Uh, this is going back to 1991, that particular album, which was called First, First Time. time. Right. You were signed to Pendulum. Pendulum Electra. Yes. Yeah. Uh, huge album for you. Did very, very well. Uh, and so that sticks in my mind. So mm -hmm. I have to tell people that. But man, over the years, this guy... By the way, he's talking about this bass, but he hasn't told you that he's a multi-instrumentalist, <laughs> if I've said that right. Uh, you play several instruments. I do. You I do. You play... Well, drums. Yes. Uh, of course, bass guitar, keyboards, and, and a little lead guitar. And you write, and you produce. Yeah. And if you... he's. He's his name is among the who and who of the music industry. He's played with everybody. Listen, he did an album that was a tribute to Al Jarreau. I'm gonna just go down the list. You'll know all these names. These are like people he played with in his buds: Gerald Albright, Regina <laughs> Bell, Will Downing, Nathan East, David Foster, Bob James, Paul Jackson Jr., Dave Cos, Bobby Lau, Marcus Miller. I can never say Greg Phila Filling Gaines. Filling Gaines yeah, name. Yeah. He played with. That, that that guy was Michael on the Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson album, like played all over. Kirk Whalem, you've played with, who's also H Town representative. Right. Uh, Al Jarreau. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just, I, I was trying to do at least names. I know you, if, I don't want to go too deep with jazz and I'm, I don't, not to disrespect anybody. I don't want to, but my point is mm -hmm. that you're so prolific. And I just, I don't know why this is important to me. I just, <laughs> I, I can't, and you know why? You got such a great heart. I've never, y'all know when somebody walks in the room, like there's this spirit that moves with them when they come into the room. It's mm. a warmth, it's a, it's inviting, <laughs> and their conversation, like Chris can probably tell you a million stories about every <laughs> one of your favorite celebrities, musicians, stuff mm. that you probably don't need to know. He probably still won't, he won't tell you. Uh, and he's so graceful and generous. And I just thought that was amazing that a, a person that's so prolific as a as a, as an entertainer mm -hmm. uh, was so humble. It just mm -hmm. threw. I mean, your brother is louder than you, and he's laid back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. uh, Mr. Walker here, he goes go to Africa. It's like, oh no, MJ is coming back. <laughs> I mean, you do huge tours. You don't stop. Yeah. You're always on the move. And I run through all that to say, and if you have not picked up any Chris Walker music, I want you to run all over your, wherever you listen to music at and grab it. It's, he's a, mm -hmm. a musical joy. Thank you. Thank now you, I'm a tiptoe through this next part of this lightly because there's a group that used to be known as uh -oh. Maze uh -oh. featuring Frankie Beverly. Right. And I won't go into the particulars of the particulars, but and it, we know just recently uh, Frankie Beverly said that he's officially retired, but that band that he tours with will move on. But I was privy enough to meet uh, the guys who started with Frankie Beverly. I've met that band. Yeah. And I'm just going to say it. You're the lead singer of this band. Right. TMF. 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 Which the music stands forever. For the music forever. The music forever. And it's, you know, the cast that's been with him for, for 20 plus years. And, and Rome actually was one of the original founding members when they were called Raw Soul. Right. And he actually came up with the name Maze. Right. So it's, you know, uh, Bear Williams, Jubu, uh, Vance Taylor, um, uh, Calvin Napper. And uh, so, you know, just, just in, in, of course, Rome and Daniel Witherspoon. Right. And, These, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you how, how, how that came to happen, okay. how that came to be. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan, of course. I've been a huge fan of Maze Future yeah. Frank for years. So anyway, um, I got my start in the business, of course, as Regina Bell's music director years ago. Mm. So she asked me to, to sing a duet in a show with her, which I started doing. Now, one of her first tours as a solo artist was opening up for Maze featuring Frankie Beverly, right? 
So here I am <clears throat> doing that tour, singing a duet in the show with her, and I would look side stage and I would see Frankie standing there. Wow. Now, of course, I'm crazy nervous, but he came up to me multiple times and said, young man, you have a great voice. Keep doing what you're doing. You're going to make it one day. So he <laughs> sowed that <laughs> seed into my life. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I went on to get a record deal and so on and so forth. So in hindsight, it's like he sowed that seed way back then right, when I was wow. 19 years old. Yeah. You know, so to, so anyways, so full, long circle, story, full circle moment. Full actually. circle moment. Yeah. So I, I posted um, during the pandemic, the Holy Spirit said, post two songs every week just to lift people's spirits because we couldn't go anywhere. Mm. So I started doing that. I posted um, We Are One on my social media platform and man, it reached over a million people. Wow. So Rome's lady, uh, Nell, saw it and she said, Rome, you need to see this guy. So she showed it to him. And at the time they were discussing, you know, starting TMF. Mm. And um, he showed it to the rest of the guys. And the guy said, oh, yeah, we know. We know, Chris, you know, because I know them as musicians, you know. So they reached out to me and um, Bear uh, invited me on a Zoom call, but he wouldn't tell me why. So in my <laughs> mind, I'm thinking, what does he want me to do? Sub yeah. on bass with, with, you know, I don't know. So anyway, so we get on this call. They said, you know, we're, we're, we're considering uh, we want we would like for you to consider being our lead singer for the for the new group that we're starting called TMF. And at first I was like, what? I was like, mm. and they said, we're, we're vetting three, four of the guys. We'd like for you to consider. And I started laughing, right? I was like, I said, fellas, the search is over. <laughs> wow. Y'all don't have to look any further. See how humble you are? Because here it is, after you've done all you've done, <laughs> platinum, gold records, <laughs> several albums, here it is like for you to be in competition for some other guys, You would some person might have an ego and go, uh, if I'm not your guy, you probably got the wrong guy. Oh, no, but no. But your no. ego, is, you're so like, hey, guys, look no more. I am that guy. Yeah, because. You're so humble. That's what I love about you. Well, well thank you, my brother. And, and they started laughing, too, because. I, I I knew I was I was ready for this because I've been a fan of theirs. I mean, I stood and watched their show every night mm. for almost a year. So it was like, you know, when I got that call, I was ready, just like when I got the call to work with Al Jarreau. Which know? is amazing. Yeah. Everyone doesn't. And how long did you work with Al Jarreau? 22 years. Wow. And people often came up to me, man, and said, um, you know, why are you with Al Jarreau? <laughs> you you know, could be doing your own thing. Well, you, well, you had your, already done your own thing. Yeah, I had, I had already done my own thing. But I, I, I said to myself, how many opportunities would an individual get to work with someone who they absolutely admired mm. and was like a mentor to them? So I, I put my own career on hold to, to basically work with Al Jarreau. Yeah. I mean, where else could I get a lesson like that? Nowhere else in life. And you did a wonderful tribute album to him. You put all the great, I'd like, it's hard to get all the greats on one album and pull that off. Right. Uh, and you, I think you did that. I think you achieved that. Well, yet again, people thought I was crazy, but when he <laughs> transitioned, one of my first calls was to Marcus Miller because Marcus produced his tenderness record. So I said, hey, Marcus. And I know Marcus, you know, I said, uh, are you going to do something RIL? He said, Chris, man, don't worry about it. I got it. So I'm thinking, okay, Marcus is going to do a project for him. Cool. Well, Marcus was only talking about doing a few songs in his show to honor him. Oh. And I said, Al deserves more, like what he did for George Duke. When George Duke passed away, he did a, a CD called My Old Friend. Gotcha. So I said, and the Holy Spirit said, it's your assignment. Don't give it to anybody else. Mm. So when I got that confirmation, I said, okay, all the provisions are going to be made for me to be able to do it on the level that it needs to be done. Yeah. So I did some research uh, on Kickstarter. People were asking for probably the maximum of $10,000 to do a project like music. Holy Spirit said, ask for 50, go for 50. And I was, everybody was like, Chris, you crazy. So anyway, even Al's band, they were like, yeah, right, Chris. I raised $50,000 in 30 days. I did not know that. Okay. This is a new part of that story. I never heard. I yeah. never knew that. $50,000 wow. in 30 days. That's how you was able to put that album together. That's how I was able to put that wow. album together. Wow. Yep. yep. Wow. So man, look, I'm a firm believer. Look, the Holy Spirit, you know, the, the Bible says a good man's steps are ordered, but you have to be moving in order for those steps to be ordered. If you're okay. standing in one place. That boy and you coming over here to preach today. I'm y'all. just saying, my brother. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I'm watching you too. You on the move. Well, I appreciate so that. I'm just saying. But I'm just, I'm really happy just to have you here. This to me is an honor for me. Thank you, uh, brother. Real quick, I'm going to jump back to the new group. It's called. T- TMF. TMF. Which is uh, the music forever. You guys will be on the road. We won't get into scandals here, uh, but I know you're working on music as well. Oh, man. Our, our first single, we put out a single uh, called Making Love to the Music, um, which I was, uh, by the grace of God, wrote. 
for the group. And um, it actually on Internet radio went number one. Okay. So we're thrilled about that, and we're in the process. Actually, we're probably going to receive the masters any day now. So it's just a single, no album yet. No, the album is coming. It's, coming, album in, is coming. it's coming in March. The album will be called? It's going to be called Self Titled TMF. Okay. okay. TMF. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Volume one. Got to let them hear a little bit of that. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, man. Woo. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I'm telling you, I haven't been this this excited about a project in a long time. Well, I have to still ask this because I know that there were times where you could be on the road with one group mm-hmm. and you could still be doing Chris Walker as well. I, I don't know how you do this, but I know for a fact that you were doing this and you probably still are doing it. Is there still going to be a Chris Walker doing Chris Walker stuff and also representing the band. Absolutely. I, I mean, I will still continue with my solo career as some of the guys in the band also have their own solo careers. Gotcha. But we come, come together, together. Right. And do uh, and TMF, TMF music. So. so will there be a Chris Walker album anytime soon? Or right now you just want to focus in on the group and you'll, you know, backspin on Chris Walker at a later date. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm focused on TMF right now. And I released, uh, a, I made a promise to my fans in South Africa that I was going to release some new music just for them. And believe it or not, I released three singles only available in South Africa to really? fulfill that promise Wow, to them. Okay. So, but I will get back in the studio because my, the way my brain works, man, it's like I'm, I'm torn between jazz. I'm torn between R and B. I'm torn between, I love country as well. And I just noticed Beyonce did a country project. Crazy, too, right? Like, yeah. Making, so. She's going to make them country people mad. <laughs> right. A lot of people don't know banjo and all these things in country music. A lot of this stuff began with people who look like me and you. That's right. But That's right. this kind of history and information gets lost somewhere or suppressed but right. we won't go there but she's versatile so she can handle it she can handle as she, you are versatile well, now, now, and also what's your first love you've played gospel you play jazz uh and you've done r&b all at the highest level that you can go mm-hmm. what is the chris walker not specialty what's what's his passion which one lies wherein does the the passion lie for one of those three branches oh. of music if and I have to say they're all equal. <laughs> I because I mean, because the thing about it is when I sit down to write a song, man, I always ask the Holy Spirit, whatever you want me to write today, just give it to me. Absolutely. And when I sit down, I can play one note, man, and it'll turn into a gospel song or it may turn into an R&B song. It may be a jazz song. I have no idea. But that's the beauty of it. Yes. You see. And um, I've written so many songs, man, and I've for, for so many other people. Right now, I'm, I'm producing um, and wrote four songs for Najee. Really? Okay. Yeah. So his next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and all that's about that. My time, Najee's first album. That's another one of my bet you don't know what's going right. on. All that's part of that. You you right there in that whole little yep. my college days in my little deck when I was trying to anyway impress yes, the little ladies and uh, Mesa too. I actually just did a song on her. I wrote a song and um uh, uh called uh, Down with Me. Wow, uh, and a duet so that we did together as well. A lot of work and you do not yeah, yeah. stop. Can't no, stop, man. No, no, you can't. You should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my final question is: I have to ask this, and this is where we started this conversation about Chris Walker being lost in the in the loving embrace of the city. In in my opinion, do you ever and I asked H down the singing group this, too, because sometimes they don't get the props that I think that they deserve as one right. of the you know first platinum groups from mm-hmm. the city, and it might be another group from the, like I said, the 60s or 70s that's escaping me right now that actually accomplished that feat as well. And we don't embrace and remember a lot of that history mm-hmm. as we should. Mm-hmm. Uh, but do you ever, and I, I know the answer is probably going to be no, but I'm asking anyway, do you ever get upset that when these names get thrown around, when people are talking <laughs> about Houston, you never hear Chris Walker's name mentioned? You know, and, and you're right. My answer is no. Yeah. I Simply mean, because I, I don't look, to man at man to validate who I am, I'm already validated by God. So he knew uh, before the foundation of the world was laid that I would be in this position, that people, whether or not I get the recognition, I, I, I don't know. But when it's his time for me, I believe it's coming. It's coming. It's never too late. You know, so that, that that's how I live my life. And I, he, he's he's placed me in so many different uh, avenues and opened so many doors for me. I just remain humble. And, um, and in God's time, I believe it'll happen. Ladies and gentlemen, 
one of my favorites, <laughs> right here from H-Town, your homeboy, Chris Walker. Thank you, my brother.